morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. Whether you're a member, a regular attendee, or you've just found us, we want you to know that we're here to support you in finding a personal relationship with the God of your understanding and in discovering what you already know. My name is Jim Grove, a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the center, and I greet you with Namaste. Namaste is Sanskrit and means the divinity in me recognizes and honors the divinity in you. Each Sunday, we begin by affirming our vision and mission statements. The words can be seen on your screen. Please feel free to read aloud with me. First, our vision. Empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive worldwide community. And now our mission. We teach science of mind principles and other life-affirming spiritual truths. We explore, we learn, we grow, we connect, honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach, and service and we celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. Now, as we prepare for our time of prayer and meditation, I invite you to relax, close your eyes, take a deep cleansing breath, and go within, as Bob Teasdale sets the tone for us with a song entitled, Spirit Flow Through Me by Eddie Watkins, Jr. Flow, spirit flow through me as I open up to be an expression of your unfolding peace. Show, spirit show through me as I open up to be an expression of your unfolding love flow spirit flow through me as I open up to be an expression of your unfolding peace show As I open up to be an expression of your unfolding love. Sing it with me now. Flow, spirit flow through me as I open up to be an expression your unfolding peace show spirit show through me as i open up to be an expression of your unfolding Join me in this meditation inspired by Dr. Ernest Holmes, the architect of our teaching. 
there is one universal mind, spirit, and intelligence that is the origin of everything. It is first cause. It is God. This universal life and energy finds an outlet in and through all that is energized and through everything that lives. This energy is in everything. There is one spirit back of all expression. The life which I live is the universal life expressing through me. My thought and emotion is the use I make consciously or unconsciously of this creative power that is the cause of everything. This creative power works for me by working through me. It cannot work for me in any other way. It spreads itself over the whole universe and shouts at me from every angle, but it can become power to me only when I recognize it as power. My belief sets the limit to my demonstration of this power, which of itself is without limit. It is ready to fill everything because it is infinite. So it isn't a question of God's willingness or ability. It's entirely a question of my receptivity and belief. How much good can I experience? As much good as I can accept and believe is possible. That is how much I can have. Following the words of Jesus, the master teacher, it is done unto you as you believe. I now set an intention to turn from old limiting beliefs that have held me back and turn toward the power behind the entire universe, which is God. Believing that all the good I can conceive is at hand, I gratefully accept this as my truth and confidently claim the blessings that are now available to me without limit. And so it is. Our spiritual leader, Reverend Karen Wolfson, is with us this morning. Her message is part two of a series entitled, What's It All About? But before we hear from Reverend Karen, Bob is back to sing another Eddie Watkins Jr. song, I Am the Place Where God Shows Up. Welcome, Bob. thing called life Am I wise enough to make the right decisions when I'm standing at the fork in the road Sometimes I wonder and I ponder only to realize I'm not alone and there's nothing that I have to do on my I am the place where God lives Moves and breathes and has its being I am the place where God shows up I am the place where God lives Moves and breathes and has its being I am the place where God shows up Will I have enough to do the things I need to do to take care of myself Will I have the health of mind and body to live a life of grace and holiness Sometimes I wonder and I ponder on it to realize I'm not alone and there's nothing that I have to do on my own Cause I am the place where God lives 
Listen to those words. You probably asked yourself these questions as I have. Am I strong enough? Am I wise enough? Will I have enough? Only to realize I'm not alone and there's nothing I have to do alone because I am the place where God shows up. You are the place where God shows up. And that, my friends, sets the tone for where we're going to go with today's message and theme. More about that in a moment. But as I said last week, experiencing all the pain, the hatred, the conflict, and the suffering we see in our world, it seems that among people everywhere is a profound sense of sheer exhaustion, mentally, physically, and yes, even spiritually. I've felt that too. Where to turn? I mean, something in me has just wanted to go home, I, whatever that is, metaphorically, that feeling of home. But where, where would that be? Where was home? Gradually, I realized what I knew deep inside, that there's only one place to turn, to rest, to seek guidance. And it was to God, to my higher power, to that infinite source of indescribable and unexplainable peace wisdom, strength, and love, and so much more. To that dimension beyond arguments and opinions and righteous pontificating and positioning, where we know we are in relationship with something greater, an energy that supports our aliveness through all the ups and downs of life's experiences, that enables us to have a higher view, to see promise and possibility, despite and beyond agonizing and seemingly hopeless appearances, a feeling of home, or, in a word, God. Now, you may have your own terminology and verbiage, and that is wonderful, because you hear a sage Sunday, here you can find a personal relationship with the God of your understanding, and by whatever name you call it. Understandably, we still feel the agony and the pain of what has happened recently, but for me, as I gradually let go of struggling and begin to become calm and trust that there is a vast, infinite wisdom supporting me, that I am the place where God shows up, I find I'm not only more peaceful, but I'm open to guidance, especially guidance around what is mine to do. And that often begins with simply being a presence of love and peace for those around me. So, as my thoughts turned to planning these messages for the month of June, it was so clear, finding my way back 
home, it meant getting back to basics, the foundation, the grounding provided by the science of mind principles we teach. So I invite you to join me and maybe this time of revisiting these will support you where you just might be feeling that tumult. And so I've entitled today's message and all of June's actually, What's It All About? And today, I'm going to wrap up my message with an incredible true story about Art Garfunkel. Remember Simon and Garfunkel? You're going to want to wait to the end to hear that story. It's a heart-stopping example that illustrates the line in the song that says, I realize I am not alone. Hmm. Now, speaking of not being alone, let's check in with each other. I am so happy that you're out there and we do have each other and that means so much. How are you doing? Let's continue to stay in touch as 2022 unfolds and know that I continue to affirm for you a year of vibrant wonder. And to you, our team of financial contributors, you too are a wonder. Just know that you continue to be an absolutely essential part of all that makes it possible for us to share our message, our caring, and our connection. Thank you, thank you. So here we go. Dr. Ernest Holmes, the architect of this teaching called Religious Science, summed it all up in the first four chapters of the textbook. They are titled, The Thing Itself, The Way It Works, What It Does, and How to Use It. Now, you might not be able to tell by those titles of these four of the four chapters that they're about God and about our relationship to God, to the universe, to life, to that which is beyond definition. So why not include God in the titles? Well, beginning with last week, the thing itself, he was aware of the dogma, the superstition, and often limited ideas around God. So he used different terminology in order to open people's awareness of this infinite loving, loving energy available to all. So last week, part one was from the first chapter, The Thing Itself, God. And you can see the video on our webpage, our Facebook page, or our YouTube channel. Today, part two, the way it works. The thing itself, how does it work? Hmm. Well, the way it works is so simple that humans in our humanness can miss it. Ernest Holmes said, the thing itself works for us by working through us and is us always. It cannot work for us in any other way. But let me say, the way it works isn't like when you buy a product, you know, where the fine print says assembly required, <laughs> instruction manual included, but it often doesn't make any sense. Here it is. There's no fine print saying assembly required. Assembly is complete. The thing itself and the way it works is through us. Kind of like the example shared by the longtime unity minister and prolific author Eric Butterworth. God is not in you as a raisin is in a bun. God is in you as the ocean is in a wave. The wave is no less than the ocean expressing as a wave. In other words, nothing to add to that wave. It has all the elements of the ocean in it. Ernest Holmes expressed it this way. He said, we are surrounded by, immersed in, and there is flowing through us a creative something. Call it what you will. And I'll say, call it spirit, as in the meditative song you heard earlier, spirit flow through me as I open up to be an expression of your love, your peace. You know, it can't help, spirit can't help, but, but do this because you and I are creations of that spirit out of itself. In the words again of Ernest Holmes, there is spirit or this invisible cause and nothing else out of which all things are made. This is what we are because we could not be anything else. You could say this is your spiritual DNA. Like Ralph Waldo Emerson expressed it just eloquently. He said, everyone is a doorway through which the infinite passes into the finite through which God becomes human, through which the universal becomes individual. 
as it breathes through our intellect, it is genius. As it breathes through our will, it is virtue. As it breathes through our affection, it is love. Now, many, many years ago, when I first attended one of our centers and I heard this, oh my, it was like a bright light turned on, grabbing my attention. This affirming declaration that my inner sense of who I was, my ideas, my intelligence, creativity, resourcefulness, my quirks, and even, even the parts of me that I was always trying so hard to improve, that all of these were God expressing as me. I felt so relieved. I felt so validated. And because of that, I felt supported and encouraged to stretch and live my life with a new enthusiasm that had been bubbling around in me for a long time, but that I had questioned and even discounted, thinking, well, you know, it's just me. It, it couldn't be that simple. Mm -hmm. This is how Holmes said it. Within the individualized point, you, is the universal which has no limits. So, the way it works is where this exploration gets up, gets up close and personal. Because more than trying to define God, it's about our personal experience of God. And there are four ways I'd like to highlight for you today about how that happens. There are many ways, but let's just look at these four. The first is aliveness, a sense of aliveness. As Holmes said, there's one life, that life is God, that life is perfect, and that life is my life now. There is one life back of everything that lives. There is one energy back of all that is energized. This energy is in everything. <laughs> Anytime you are feeling more alive, energized, inspired, could be nature, laughter, music, poetry, silence, a baby, your pet, a beloved friend or family member, and more. Any of these that inspire that sense of aliveness that's God expressing as you. I love and have said many times these words of Howard Thurman, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do that because the world needs people who have come alive. And that's a perfect segue to the second, second way that God shows up as you. In your uniqueness, what makes you come alive especially is expressing your uniqueness. Don't you, don't you know that from experience? As I shared earlier, Holmes said, within the individual point, you, is the universal which has no limits. In other words, he tells us, spirit put the stamp of individuality on itself and called it you. That's your authentic, one-of-a-kind expression, your talents, your dreams and desires or in the words of the brilliant Jean Houston. If I were to state the essence of the teaching of the science of mind, it would be that the core of each human being is the original creative genius of the universe. Wow. <laughs> so God shows up through our aliveness and our uniqueness. And number three, through our actions. As Dr. Michael Beckwith often says of the Agape Center for Spiritual, of, uh, Spiritual Truth in um, California, he says, you and I are spirit's delivery system. I love that. You and I are spirit's delivery system. You know, the infinite exists everywhere, infinitely. But it is always searching for an outlet, a way to be delivered through us to each of us. Kind of like electricity, you know, it's always there. But until we plug in or have the right devices or the right uh, delivery system, it does no good. Same thing with Bluetooth, which is all the thing now, you know, with all your devices. Bluetooth is always there, even when we're not using it. But it becomes a tool 
that we use, it becomes when we have the right delivery system, like our iPad, our iPhone, our iPod, our speakers, countless devices. So how does the creativity, the love, and the resourcefulness of spirit show up in the world in a practical way? in other words, as our delivery system, is by means of you and me, our boots on the ground, hands reaching out, being of service and support and compassion. You know, we humans tend to plead with God to fix things, to be the solution. You know, and the truth is, the Creator has provided us with everything. It's complete, enough, more than enough for everyone. And now, it's on us. If you remember that movie, Oh God, Oh God, starring George Burns and um, John Denver, God says, I set it up perfectly in working order. Now it's up to you. And by the way, please try not to hurt one another. We are God's delivery system. And the fourth way God shows up is as our silent partner. We are not alone. You know, in that song, it says, sometimes I wonder and ponder only to realize I'm not alone. Ernest Holmes said it in many ways. And I love this particular one. He said, you have a silent partner with the infinite. This partnership has never been dissolved. It never can be. We can believe that God is the invisible partner in our lives and affirm that that divine love goes before us and prepares the way. We can permit ourselves to be guided, for there is something deep at the center of our being which knows what we ought to do and how we ought to do it. Now here's the story I told you about. Sanford, or Sandy Greenberg, now is in his late 70s, he recalls that during his first week of college at Columbia University, a young man with short blonde hair, wearing an argyle sweater and corduroy pants, came over to him and said, Hi, I'm Arthur Garfunkel. Remember Art Garfunkel of Simon and Garfunkel? Soon Sandy and Art were roommates, and Sandy writes, Every night Arthur and I would sing. He'd play his guitar, and I'd be the DJ. A close bond of friendship was forged, and even at their young age, Art and Sandy made a pact to always be there for each other in times of trouble, no matter what. Well, Sandy writes some months later, probably still in his first year of college, maybe his second, he said, I lost my sight due to an undiagnosed glaucoma that had destroyed my optic nerves. Now, Sandy was the son of Jewish immigrants who had no money to help him. So he had to quit college, giving up his dream of becoming a lawyer. And he plunged into deep depression. He says, I wouldn't see anyone. I refused to talk to anybody. And then unexpectedly, Art flew in saying he had to talk to me. He said, you're going to come back to school, aren't you? I said, no, there's no conceivable way. Well, he was insistent, and he finally said, Look, I don't think you get it. I need you back there. Remember, that's the pact we made together. We would be there for each other in times of crisis. And I will help you. So, together with Art, Sandy returned to the university where he was dependent on Art's support. Art would walk him to class, bandage his wounds when he fell, and he also filled out Sandy's graduate school applications. So many things. And in a show of empathy, Art called himself darkness. He explained, I was saying I want to be together where you are, in the dark. And Sandy wrote that he would come in and say, uh, Art would come in and say, darkness is going to read to you now. And then he would, of course, take me to class and back, and he would take me around the city, New York City. He altered his entire life so that it would accommodate me. 
Well, one day as Art and Sandy had completed several errands in New York City, they stopped in front of the always crowded, bustling Grand Central Station. If you've been there, you know. And Art said he had to quick run and take care of one more errand, but that he would return shortly. Well, Sandy waited and waited and waited. Finally, he had to get back to campus. He was terrified, but he started out. He stumbled and fell more than once. He writes about it later, and he said, I cut my forehead, I cut my shins, my socks were bloodied, I had my hands out in front of me, bumping into people and upsetting them. <laughs> it was a horrendous feeling of shame and humiliation. I started running forward, knocking over coffee cups and briefcases, and finally, finally I got to the train and back to Columbia. It was the worst couple of hours in my life. And as I was stumbling toward my dormitory, I bumped into a man, and the man apologized. I knew in an instant it was Arthur's voice saying, I've got you. <laughs> well, for a moment, I was enraged that he had deserted me. And then I understood what had happened, that his colossally insightful, brilliant, yet wildly risky strategy had worked. You see, Art was with Sandy the whole time, watching his friend trying to get back to the university, struggling and falling, he was there. And Sandy wrote, Arthur knew it was the only way I could prove to myself I could do, uh, I could do it and that I would have real independence. And it worked because after that I felt I could do anything. Well, that experience was the spark that caused me to live a completely different life without fear and without doubt. For that, I am tremendously grateful to my friend. Sandy graduated and went on for a master's degree at Harvard and then Oxford. But while he was in England, he received a phone call from his friend Art, and with it a chance to keep his side of their pact. Art Garfunkel wanted to drop out of his studies in the School of Architecture, who knew, <laughs> and record his first album with Paul Simon. But he told Sandy, I need $400 to get started. Well, Sandy by then was married to his high school sweetheart. And he says, we had exactly $404 in our checking account. But I said, Arthur, you will have your check for $400. It was an instant response because he held help, had helped me my, in, my entire life. He had helped me restart my life. His request was the first time I'd been able to live up to my half of our covenant, of our pact. <laughs> now that album that Art needed $400 to start, that album in 1964 pretty much flopped. However, the one track which was released as a single the following year went to number one worldwide. Guess what it was? The Sound of Silence, that song with the line, Hello, darkness, my old friend. Sandy had extraordinary successes as an inventor, an entrepreneur, an investor, presidential advisor, and philanthropist. I rest my case. The way it works, you have a silent partner, always. And so, as you ponder the power and reassurance of this truth, I think you're going to want to sing along with Bob. God's love keeps me keeps lifting me higher and higher. God's love keeps lifting me higher and higher than I've ever been lifted before. And so it is. I'll see you soon.
God's love keeps lifting me, keeps on lifting me, lifting me higher and higher, higher. God's love keeps lifting me, keeps on lifting me, lifting me higher and higher, higher. Now once I was downhearted, disappointment was my closest friend. But you came, soon it departed, and never showed its face again. God's love keeps lifting me, keeps on lifting me, lifting me higher and higher, higher. God's love keeps lifting me, keeps on lifting me. found you you're that one in a million friends when you wrap your loving thoughts around me I can stand up and face the world again God's love keeps lifting me keeps on lifting me lifting me higher and higher higher God's love keeps Thank you, Reverend Karen, for your compelling message, and Bob for lifting us up higher and higher in song. Now, as we move into our time of offering, I want you to know that we're so grateful for your generous financial support of this center that allows us to support you in so many ways. There are three easy ways to share your offering. On your screen, you'll see our website, which is www.cslsarasota.com, where you can choose a couple of options. You can select the Donate button, which allows you to contribute via PayPal or by credit card. Or you can mail a check to our address. You can also set up automatic contributions through your own online banking. And now I invite you to place your hand over your heart as you reflect on your gift, blessing it as you share it. And know this with me, my gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper, and the divine flow returns it to me, multiplied abundantly. Now please join me in our offering affirmation on your screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you so much. If you'd like prayer support, I'd like to draw your attention to the green prayer request button. We invite you to use this feature to send us your request. Our five licensed spiritual practitioners, Kathleen Frankert, Ron Frost, Nicole Leeds, Sean Scanlon, and me are available to know and affirm spiritual truth with and for you in whatever challenge you may be experiencing. We're also available for one hour spiritual coaching sessions by appointment. For more information, check our website under the staff link at the left side of the screen and then select practitioners. 
Here on our website, you can also sign up to receive our weekly email newsletter. Please also check out our Facebook page for posts about upcoming events. I have one announcement for you this morning. Our Spiritual Living Circle meets via Zoom every Wednesday evening for one hour from 7 to 8 p.m. to discuss an article from the current month's Science of Mind magazine. This week, we'll be discussing the article by Reverend Dr. C.C. Coltrane in the June issue entitled, The Deep Spirituality of Aging. This is a wonderful, no-cost opportunity for spiritual development and social connection with other like-minded individuals. If you'd like to participate, please email me at the address on your screen, and I'll send you the Zoom link, article, and discussion guide. Now, as we conclude this sacred time together, let us move forward into the week ahead, aware of the ways God shows up as us. I invite you to listen or join in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Thank you for being with us and have a great week, everyone. Solemn. 